What's up you guys, I'm back again with another video here on this channel and it's been a while since I posted a Mistweaver guide on this channel and the reason is, is because Mistweavers weren't so strong in the past recent patches. However, as of late, they've received a lot of buffs and now they are incredibly strong so I figured it's a good time for me to hop back on the Mistweaver and bring a guide to all of you guys out there. Now, who is this guide for? This guide is for those of you who are, number one, either deciding to pick up a Mistweaver and never have healed before, those of you who are returning to the game and have played a Mistweaver in the past, or those of you who have played other healers and just want to try a new healer instead, one that's incredibly strong. Now, like all of my guides in the past, I'm gonna try to go through this rather quickly. I'm gonna be covering our general talents. I'll then cover our PVP talents. I'll then go into gear, stats, and any items that you might want. I'll also be covering Azerite traits, essences, corruptions, and then I'll spend some time talking about some general tips and tricks that you might want to know before picking up this class. Jeez, that's a lot. Now hopping right into our general talents, I'm going to assume that you guys have read your talents before. If you haven't, you should. It's gonna make a world of difference if you actually read your abilities. Yeah, I know, go figure. Level 15, you're always gonna take Mist Wrap, free healing, everything else is Garbanzo, just take this talent. Level 30, it's Cheat Torpedo, and sometimes, very rarely, Tiger's Lust. If you feel like you have enough mobility on your team and you feel like maybe your allies are getting stuck in Roots, Novas, you can opt to give them Tiger's Lust, but it does not give them immunity to snares and slows, so it's not as effective as you would think, but you can explore this talent if your allies ask for it. However, I almost always take Cheat Torpedo because it gives me a lot more control over the map. It gives me a lot more mobility. And with this macro where you can just stop your roll or Cheat Torpedo at any time, it allows you to cut edges a lot easier when fighting mages so you can line of sight polymorphs. I'll put that macro in the info box below and I will also talk about it at the end of the video. Now for level 45, I personally take Manatee because I prefer when and how I save my mana. I don't like to rely on life cycles and have to cycle vivify and you know and enveloping mist to try and save mana there i can choose when i want to save mana and at what times i want to save mana during really crucial moments where i know i'm gonna have to, i'm gonna be have to healing be healing a lot so that's why i take manatee i don't mess around with anything else in my opinion everything else is garbanzo for level 60 ring of peace is extremely powerful and it's one that you're going to take a lot literally has so much value you can use it offensively and you can use it defensively you can use ring of peace to interrupt casts you can use ring of peace to defend your allies if they're taking a lot of damage you can also use it during moments like smoke bomb if you're fighting a rogue and the rogue lands a kidney shot you can throw the smoke but you can throw the ring of peace in the smoke bomb knock the rogue out of it and prevent a lot of damage there but you can also use it offensively by knocking the enemy team and control their position you can knock the healer off a ledge and make it so they have to run all the way back up to get in line of sight of their target you can also use it to knock the enemy who you're doing damage to or your team is dealing damage to out of line of sight of the healer you can also use it during moments when I, you know you're fighting a discipline priest and they use barrier of light you can just use that and knock the priest out of their barrier or their dome of light that's extremely effective there so ring of peace for me is pretty much my go-to however versus demon hunters and 2v2s this talent is extremely strong and i'll talk about that during the tips and tricks portion of the video level 75 i always take killing elixir i used to mess around with diffuse magic for some mages and stuff like that however you save so much mana with healing elixir throughout the game that's really hard to pick anything else it's just free healing for yourself and that's really what you need as a misweaver is to be as mana efficient as possible level 90 everything else sucks other than summon jade serpent statue and this talent is incredibly strong so you always take this again just more free healing with no mana cost you look for opportunities like these as a misweaver and this talent aligns with that ideology and the same goes for level 100 focus thunder the class literally revolves around focus thunder and getting out free vivifies getting out massive enveloping mists or even in some rare cases extending your hots or having longer duration renewing mists so this talent has a lot of utility and it works extremely well with your azurite trait secret infusion which again i'll get to at a later portion of the video all right now going right into our pvp talents you guys if you're a human, you can mess around by playing Relentless. Relentless with the human racial is extremely strong. However, if you're an orc or anything else, you're always going to take Gladiator's Medallion. Adaptation, I think, is just too easy to play around. So I always take things like Gladiator's Medallion or Relentless if I am a human. Now, for your PvP talents, the one that is a guaranteed lock-in is going to be Chrysalis. Chrysalis is extremely powerful. It's pretty much why, the you know, the main reason why Mistweavers are so powerful at the moment is because their cocoon when paired with their burst of life as a right trait here it makes cocoon with chrysalis a 55 second cooldown and with the recent buff to cocoon 
it is a massive, massive defensive, a massive absorption, a massive shield that also provides additional healing because Cocoon also increases the healing of all of your other healing over time effects by 50%. That is crazy. It's just the insta top whenever you use it, and it's why the class is so strong. And you're never not going to play this unless you're just, it's never not a double negative. You're never not gonna choose this talent because it's so strong unless you're playing a really short game versus like double dps and even then just always take it it's that powerful all right now let's talk about some of the pvp talents that i like to take whenever i can those two really are eminence and counteract magic i don't always play these in combination it's just the ones that i always try to look out for and see if i can select one of those talents Eminence reduces the cooldown of your teleport, your transcendence by 20 seconds, making it a 25 second cooldown. And that is similar to the Legion playstyle. When you were playing a Mistweaver and Legion, you had a much shorter cooldown on your port, and this aligns with that and makes it very similar to Legion. Your port is one of your strongest getaway tools as a Mistweaver. It's much more reliable than Chi Torpedo. Chi Torpedo is very buggy. Sometimes you'll get stuck on a wall or you can get stunned on your Chi Torpedo, and it doesn't directly get you out of the fight like your teleport does, right? If you're in the middle of the map, you can literally just port to safety behind a pillar and top off, and that is one of the most effective ways of getting out of the fight as a Mistweaver. So you always wanna take this talent if you can, versus almost everything. You can use it versus melee cleaves. You can use it to avoid polymorphs. You can use it to avoid traps on a consistent basis. It's extremely powerful and you wanna take it whenever you can. Counteract magic is very similar in that way. We talked about a little bit earlier in the video when going over our general talents that it's extremely important as a Mistweaver to preserve your mana and be mana efficient, and this just allows you to do that even better. Counteract magic increases the healing of your renewing mist, one of your healing overtime effects by 135% if the target you're healing has a magic overtime effect on them. So for Shadow Priest, I try and take this versus Destro Warlocks. I try and take this versus Elemental Shamans. I try and take this versus Discipline Priests. I try and take this. Any class that has a magic over time effect, I try and take this talent because it's just free healing and it buffs the spell by an incredible amount. Even versus Resto Shamans in twos, sometimes I'll mess around with this because I know they put up Flame Shock for extra damage and that's going to give me more healing. So those are the ones I try and select when I can. Again, just not in combination of each other i just look out for these pvp talents and try and pick them up whenever i can now ones that i swap in and out all the time are things like grapple weapon grapple weapon i take versus almost every single melee cleave because you can play around their burst a lot with this talent when i'm fighting a rogue i try and take this talent because i like to disarm as kidney shot is coming off cooldown or when I target the target that I'm healing, or if I know they're about to get kidney shot or there are kidney shot, I'm gonna disarm the rogue during that kidney shot. Same goes for warriors on their avatar. Same goes for death knights on their unholy frenzy. Same goes for any melee class that has offensive CDs. The ones that this talent does not work against are classes like Windwalker Monk. You can disarm them. They just can't fist the fury, but they can use everything else. So it's not as effective there. Versus demon hunters, I like to disarm them on their eye beam so they don't get a lot of damage out. I like to disarm whenever I can versus any melee cleave because it prevents them from dealing a lot of damage which in turn is going to save me a lot of mana or just save my ally in general now when i'm fighting like a rogue mage for example you might be wondering well do you play counteract magic and grapple weapon if i'm fighting a rogue mage in twos or threes it doesn't matter i always play zen focus t grapple weapon and chrysalis i don't play counteract magic and grapple weapon I'll talk about the rare case that I do if you're following me along here, but I always play Zen Focus. I used to play talents like Counteract Magic and Zen Focus versus Rogue Mage a few seasons ago because the damage was somewhat healable. And I like to play Counteract Magic then. I like to because it felt like the meta was a little bit more dampener and I wanted more overall healing throughput and just more mana preservation. However, rogues deal so much damage now in Kidney Shot at this point in the game where this talent, although it's extremely powerful, I have to take Grapple Weapon because Kidney Shot even outside of Vendetta is just a terrifying ability. I think it's the most broken ability in the entire game, to be honest. It's a 20 second CD that puts them in a full duration stun. And now with all of the trinkets that are going on, like the Dressgrath trinket from the new raid or the uh, remote guidance device from Mechagon, those allow rogues to deal damage during just random moments. Tentacles, corruptions allow rogues to deal damage at any moment in a kidney shot. So you always want to have grapple weapons to try and negate their damage and not so much the mages ignite damage 
and try and passively heal it with, you know, heal through it with Renewing Mist. So versus Rogue Mage, these are my go-to talents. However, this talent in general, Zen Focus T, is one that I hate to take, but I will take it sometimes. I never take this talent versus melee cleaves, ever. Ever, 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 unless there's nothing to disarm. This talent for me is pretty much like the definition of when you have to use it is it oh shit moment, and it's a situation that you don't wanna be in especially versus a melee cleave. One of the ways that you oom as a Mistweaver versus melee cleaves is when you're stuck with two melee on you and you have nowhere to go for a few seconds and you have there's no kicks out of the way yet and you have no cocoon and you have to sit here, activate Zen Focus T and just spam healing into yourself. You are not a class that can tank melee damage. You can heal through it, but you're gonna take an absurd amount of damage. You're extremely squishy. And if you're in one of those scenarios as a Mistweaver, you're already losing, okay? I don't like to take this versus melee cleaves ever because you have to be able to kite away from them enough to where this talent isn't something that you rely on. It's gonna build a bad habit of wasting rolls, wasting ports when you don't have to, wasting ring of pieces when you don't have to, and then just getting stuck in bad positions where you go, oh shit, I have Zen Focus T, I can just heal with them on me. You don't wanna be in those scenarios. You wanna be able to kite more effectively and avoid them at all costs, and talents like Eminence or your short port allow me to do so. So versus melee cleaves, I always take this unless there's nothing to disarm. Then I might even consider a refreshing breeze, which I rarely take, but I might to just save a little bit more mana on my vivifies. So, cause because I'm gonna be healing more. So if I'm healing more, I'm not having to use them as much. And then maybe I would consider it talents like Zen Focus T, but I don't like to play. You're gonna need those oh shit moments with Rogue Mage. So Zen Focus T is good there. I also play it versus Warlock comps. Uh, Warlock comps for me. You know, there's a lot of times where you're healing some melee DPS and they're stuck in the middle of the arena. You have no cocoon. You have no uh, vitality conduit available. We'll cover that in a second. You have nothing available and you have to heal him. He's stuck in the middle of the map and you can't afford to fake cast. Zen Focus T is good versus Warlocks. But generally, I try not to take it if I can. And I try to preserve more mana other ways by reducing damage or just getting more healing out through counteract magic. The only time versus Rogue Mage, though, that I might take something else other than Zen Focus T, I might play something like this if I'm playing with two other casters. If I'm playing with like a Destra Warlock and a Fire Mage, there are so many things that the enemy team, like a Rogue Mage, have to interrupt, like Fears, Chaos Bolts, and maybe Greater Power Blast, that I don't really have to worry about them interrupting me ever. So I'd rather go with a much more dampener build to adjust to my more dampener comp playstyle. So something like this might be beneficial there, but versus Rogue Mage, and versus Warlocks, it's going to be something like this. And if it's a Warlock on the team, obviously Disarm does no help for me there. So Counteract Magic would do good there. So, you know, if I'm fighting like a Shadow Priest Warlock, I'm going to play something like this to try and, you know, just passively heal through the damage. And then during oh shit moments, I activate my Cocoon. And then in worst case scenarios, Zen Focus T there. Healing Sphere is a talent that I messed around with. I personally don't like it, but you can play it versus Shadow Priest if you think you just want to passively dispel dots for a team. It could be beneficial, but I just think better options are something like Counteract Magic and Refreshing Breeze. If you just want to just fight against like a double Shadow Priest or like an Ellie Shadow Priest, you definitely don't need Zen Focus T versus an Ellie Shadow Priest because it's just like so, there's just so few interrupts for you to deal with that Zen Focus T doesn't have a lot of value. So I might play Refreshing Breeze over something like Healing Sphere. You might even want to explore Vision to Perfection Major, which I'll talk about a little bit later on in the video. So I'd only take Healing Sphere. Dome of Mist can be useful, but you don't rely on Enveloping Mist as much as you used to as a Mistweaver because Vivify does so much healing with Secret Infusion. So I don't take that there often at all. And then I pretty much never take Surging Mist ever, 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 unless I'm doing like fighting like some crazy double DPS 2v2 and I just want as much healing as I can get. I, I don't ever take this talent. And then I never take Way of the Crane as a PvP talent. The only time I would take it is if I'm playing Conflict and Strife Major as an Essence. And I'll talk about that in a bit later. And in those case scenarios, you would have Way of the Crane as default, so I would never take it there. But those are your PvP talents, you guys. Again, your general build might look something like this versus like, you know, a melee cleave. If I'm fighting a Demon Hunter in 2v2s, I'm playing like this. Any melee in 2v2s, Rogue, Death Knight, you know, Demon Hunter, I take this versus Windwalker. It's either this if I'm really scared or just refreshing Breeze to save mana. 
You know, if I can't disarm the target, it's something else other than disarm. But every melee, any melee, it's always this pretty much. All right, let's talk about gear really quickly. Let's talk about stats. Now, this character, I recently kind of got up to speed. I he's, My cloak, believe it or not, is only level 9, you guys. This is a brand new... Well, not a brand new character. I've played this character for a long time since Legion. But I recently started playing it again this season. So I had to gear him up, you know, from scratch just as of late. And you can tell by my cloak level. 470 level, I, I level not bad uh, for this point in the patch. I have 22% Versa and 86% Mastery. You want to go for a high amount of Mastery and a high amount of Versa. In my opinion, Versa with priority, versatility as your prio. So you want to have as much versatility as you can. You want to be above 20% versatility at all times. I think 20% is kind of like the cutoff for you. And then Mastery, I think 80% is the cutoff for you. Obviously, if you're below that, you can still play the class, but you want to have those types of stats. I'm going for about 90% mastery. That's my goal with 25% verse. That's where I'd like to get to. If I can get above that, that's even better. You know, that's even better. But those are the stats that you want, and that's what you're gonna be looking for. Now, in terms of just items in general for gear, trinkets that you're gonna want, guys. Trinkets that you're gonna want are trinkets like the revitalizing voodoo totem is a must for Mistweavers any healer in general. It's the most powerful healing trinket currently in the game. It comes from a tall Dazar. Spam Mythic Plus till you get this trinket. This trinket is so strong, it makes a massive difference in the way that you heal because times like where you'd have to use Zen Focus T, that shitty honor talent, you could just use your Revitalizing Voodoo Totem. It'll top the person. You could also use it during times where you might have to cocoon somebody or you're just panicking or whatever or versus Demon Hunters and you have no way to get the kick out of the way and they're all over you. You have nothing available. You can use this talent and it's a gr uh, this this item, and it's a great way also to save mana, guys. I mean, you're just getting free healing from an item. Get this trinket; it makes a world of difference. If you do not have it, you have no idea what you're missing out on. Another trinket that's very similar to that is the Forbidden Obsidian Claw. This comes from the second boss Mott on in the new raid. And you can do a normal heroic. The normal version versus the heroic version gives you the same amount of mana back. What this trinket does is it drains the target's life force, it deals an absurd amount of damage, and it restores a you know, absurd amount of mana, around 11,000 mana while it's up on them over the duration of 8.5 seconds. So you're gonna wanna use this trinket when the enemy healer is in CC or they have no dispel available. So let's say for example, you know your teammate landed a fear or a sheep or something like that, and you see it dispelled, you wanna immediately throw this trinket out on them or someone on the team to try and get some mana back and cause additional pressure. This trinket does so much damage that it can force the enemy healer's trinket just to dispel it because it's a game changer if this trinket goes off. You're getting 11,000 mana back, you're dealing a ton of damage, and it's also great to try and finish off healers when they're in a stun. So if you're playing twos and you see that your Windwalker Monk or your Death Knight or your Demon Hunter landed a stun, I'm gonna throw this trinket on the healer when they're in a stun. I can force a trinket with that from the enemy healer, or if they have no trinket, they might just die because the trinket does so much damage and it's giving me a massive lead due to the amount of mana that it gives me back. Also, it's another way to not oom um because you are also getting mana back. So if you want to be more mana efficient as a Mistweaver, these two trinkets are going to make a massive difference. Go out of your way to get them. Eventually you'll get them. Don't give up. They're very important. All right, let's cover Azerite traits now because we're talking about gear. Azerite traits are pretty much the same as they've been in the past few seasons. Secret Infusion is my favorite Azerite trait for the Mistweaver. I'm currently using the Engineering Helm because it's a guaranteed way to get, you know, the Azerite trait that you want. And I think Auto Self Cauterizer is an amazing inner ring trait because inner ring traits are nerfed so bad that all the effects that you get from them aren't that useful, but the actual like standard effect that you get is still intact. So this one can just remove bleeds. And one of the biggest kryptonites to Mistweavers are rogues and being able to wipe the bleeds off of you that they have on you is very crucial. But that's not the main point of this conversation. We're talking about Secret Infusion. Secret Infusion is my favorite Azerite trait because it allows me to choose how I want to use this. And pretty much the only way that you're going to be using this is in two different ways. You're either going to use it on your Vivifies. This is going to give you 815 of a stat for 10 seconds, depending on the spell that you cast after you activate Thunder Focus T, which is this ability right here. So if I activate this ability, depending on the next spell that I use, I'll get a stat of my choice. If I use Enveloping Mist, you get Critical Strike. Don't really want that one. You can get Haste from Renewing Mist. Not really that useful in PvP. 
Vivify, mastery, extremely useful in PvP, and versatility, also extremely useful in PvP. So versatility, if you use it on a Rising Sun, kicks in, allow you to deal more damage, more healing, make you a little more durable, right? If someone's training you, you can use your Rising Sun Kick to try and take a little bit less damage. If you're stacking three of these, like I am right here, you're gonna get a ton of extra verse. If you use it with mastery, so if you Thunder Focus T and you use it for mastery, you're gonna get a ton of mastery, which is free healing, guys. It's free healing because mastery, that's versatility there, mastery, is going to give you just free healing due to gust of mist gust of mist when you have a hot on somebody and you heal them it's going to do a burst of healing on them for no mana cost at all so mastery makes you very mana efficient and if you're using thunder focus t with vivify you're going to be getting a ton of mastery but what makes it even better is just thunder focus t in general you also get beneficial effects when you use thunder focus t without secret infusion you just can choose how you want to use your spells which makes the class really fun in my opinion so if you use thunder focus t and vivify your next vivify costs no mana and if you look at your talents here focus thunder gives you two charges on your thunder focus t the next two spells you cast are benefited by thunder focus t so if i use vivifies my next two vivifies cost no mana but i'm also getting 2445 mastery obviously that's nerfed in arena but it's an absurd amount of mastery giving me 188 percent which is this ridiculous amount of free healing and remember when i use it with vivify Thunder Focus T makes it cost no mana. So I'm getting free healing. I'm not spending any mana. Sometimes I use my Thunder Focus T with, you know, Enveloping Mist. Sometimes I use it with my Rising Sun Kick. We'll talk about that a bit later, but that's a really important Azurite trait. The other one that you want to really look out for is your Burst of Life. You need one of these. You have to have one of these. It's mandatory. This one's going to reduce the cooldown of your Cocoon by 20 seconds, making it get to that 50 second, you know, cooldown point when you have Chrysalis selected. So that is crucial to the class and is a core part of the toolkit there. And it also gives them free healing when the cocoon expires or explodes, whatever. They're going to be getting a ton of extra healing from that. So you ideally want to stack three bursts of life, three circuit infusions. Obviously, I'm using the engineering helm that doesn't have burst of life on it, but it does have secret infusion. And I really like the engineering helmet, so I use that one. And then my chest piece, because this character is kind of a new alt, I'm just using these. And you know, Misty Peaks is not that good for PvP, but I do like it in PvE. So that's why I have it selected there. But ideally, three secret infusion, go for that. Three bursts if you can get it. If you can't, at least get one. All right, on to essences. Now, again, I recently picked this character up as of this patch again. So I had to go back and farm all the essences. I played a lot of classic, worst decision of my life, honestly, but I played a lot of classic, so I missed out on a lot of the content. So I have to refarm a lot of these essences. Ones that I really need to get are things like Memory of Lucid Dream and, you know, uh, Well of Existence and Ever Rising Tide, some for PV, some for PVP. But the ones that you need to have, the ones that are very important are Conflict and Strife. You get this through PVP. Vitality Conduit is probably the most important one here as a major essence. You pretty much will always play this in threes because in threes, this thing just heals for a ridiculous amount. What this does, you should know what it does. It just basically leeches health from nearby allies onto the target you use it on and it heals them for an absurd amount, which is another oh shit button when you're you know fighting against a rogue mage, fighting against a melee cleave. If you ever just need a lot of healing, Vitality Conduit will do that for you. This one, you have to go do the old raid, last year raid, but it's so easy to do. You can clear on Heroic in like an hour. You can do the boss on Mythic. Every few bosses drop these thing called Relic Release. You need a bunch of them. You grab them, you turn them in. You combine them, you get the essence. You can get it in a week. Don't sweat it. It's really easy to get. So Vitality Conduit is one that you're going to want. Conflict and Strife. You're also going to want Vision of Perfection sometimes. I like Vision of Perfection major. When I'm fighting Shadow Priest, I've been exploring with it. It seems extremely helpful because it just auto dispels dots. When you use your Vision of Perfection as a major, your spells and abilities have a chance to just proc your revival. And your revival, as you know, is one of your talent, your abilities, and it auto dispels everyone in your group within a 40 yard radius. So it does a heal, but it just auto dispels them. So you can pretty much just randomly proc a revival. It is a little weird because it might, you know, dispel you, dispel them, and you get feared off into a weird, you know, spot when you don't want to. But the value you get from it is just crazy because you're just AoE dispelling the team randomly and you're getting free healing out. And versus rock comps for me, Vitality Conduit is not that useful. 
Other options versus rock comps could be things like Memory of Lucid Dreams for extra mana. You could play Crucible of the Flame for extra damage, but I like Vision of Perfection personally. Another major essence that you might take is Conflict and Strife Major. This can be useful if you are fighting a melee cleave and you do not want to get stuck in a slow. You can use Way of the Crane to get you out of slows, like versus a Frost DK or something where you just can't kite that easily. You can use Wave of the Crane to just run around a pillar in circles because you can't be slow during Wave of the Crane. However, Wave of the Crane costs a shitload of mana, so I don't really like taking it. But it can also be useful for the, you know, the major effect and the minor effect of getting a bunch of extra versatility when caught in a stun. It doubles your versatility benefit, making it so you take a lot less damage when caught in a stun. However, you do lose Vitality Conduit as a major. So first Rogue Mage, you could take Conflict and Strife. However, when you do take that, you're banking on them going you and not your allies. And you lose Vitality Conduit as a major versus Rogue Mage, which I think is just almost mandatory at this point because of the amount of damage they do and you just have to rely on your allies to peel for you and hopefully not die and just spam cocoon when you get out of the stun because you're gonna die in that stun if you do not have cocoon up outside of that so vitality conduit major is one that you're always going to take conflict and strife major is something that you, something that you might take uh vision of perfection you can explore versus shadow priest and rock comps and then crucible of the flame is pretty much that one that i take every game in 2v2s if you're doing twos you always want to deal as much damage as possible because, you know, healing loses value in 2v2s the longer the game goes on. Damage doesn't. So having extra damage for your team in a 2v2 matchup, I think, is mandatory. So I take Crucible of the Flame there. As far as Miners go, I always have Conflict and Strife Miner. I just prefer it. And I always have Vitality Conduit major, uh, Miner if it's not my Major. So these two for me are, you know, auto lock-ins for the Miner if I'm not taking any of them Major. And then I like Spirit of Preservation personally as a miner because it gives me a shitload of extra healing on my Vivify if I'm just kind of avoiding doing any healing at all. If I'm just throwing out hots and lining a lot, I can come out with a massive Vivify with Spirit of Preservation as my stacks build up. However, if I did have Memory of Lucid Dream, max rank, I'm still working on it on my Demon Hunter so I can get it account wide for my Mistweaver. I would have it as a minor probably in this spot, but I like Spirit of Preservation rank three a lot. So those are the ones I typically always play. Pretty easy to farm. Most of them are really easily obtainable. So don't stress too much when you're picking up the Mistweaver. Essences are pretty easy to grab right away. Okay, so that's gear, essences, and pretty much all of it except corruption. Now corruption, you guys, you don't need the craziest corruption as a healer. The corruption that you do want as a Mistweaver, if you could just choose, which you can't choose, is going to be the verse benefits. Anything that give you more versatility or mastery. So static, you know, percentage versatility, static mastery, per you know, uh, percentage, uh, you know, maybe proc on damage versatility. Those are ones that you're going to want to get. I actually got that on my EU Mistweaver just this morning. I have it. I don't have it on my North American Mistweaver yet. I don't know why. I'm just not getting very lucky with those. I am getting, you know, infinite stars. I do have an infinite stars weapon here as well from the raid. So I'm getting a lot of infinite stars, which could be okay. I also have haste benefit procs from my gear. This just gives me a shitload of haste. And this has a lot of uptime uh, racing pulse. Pretty decent, but haste isn't one of your best stats, but it is nice just to get this haste proc, which is essentially a bloodlust in arena. I really like it. I actually have two of these that sometimes I mess around with. If you don't have any corruptions, it's not the end of the world. Healer without corruptions aren't the most massive thing in the universe because you're not a damage dealer. You're just trying to get healing. So stats are the ones that you can get. If you don't have them, don't sweat it. Okay, so I know it's a lot of info, but I'm gonna go over some quick general tips and tricks that you guys might wanna pick up. Again, I've covered a lot of this stuff in the past. So you can go check out my older guides, or you can just simply just check me out on my stream somewhere here on the screen, guys. You can head to my stream and ask me any questions that you want there, or just so you know, you're not a Twitch guy, you're not a live stream guy, you can just go comment in the comment section below. Quickly, we're gonna talk about some of the general tips though. Macros that I use. This macro is a must for me. This macro has everything in it that I pretty much use. It has slash stop casting, so I can use my, uh, you know, I can just fake cast with my Soothing Mist. You don't really need that anymore because back in Legion, you can move and channel Soothing Mist. You can't do that anymore, so you can just move to fake cast now as a Mistweaver. But I just use this button instead, and it's just by habit. But it has stop casting. It has cancel, cheat torpedo, and roll, and we'll talk about that in a second. And it also has you know provoke or taunt arena pet one two three. So basically, I can taunt the re the pet of an enemy player. So if I'm about to get trapped, for example, by a hunter, 
I can see it coming. I'm going to try and taunt the pet to try and break the trap as I'm getting trapped so I can get out of that CC for free. But mainly I'm using it for the Cheat Torpedo and Roll. So a lot of the times I see Mist Reavers, they roll way too far to try and land a leg sweep or they don't cut corners as well and they get caught in CC. So for example, one example would be if I'm trying to get to this guy over here and I were to roll, let's say I want to land a leg sweep right here and I want to roll to land this leg sweep because I need it instantly. I need to get this leg sweep out right away to try and finish out a CC chain. A lot of the times, if you just roll regularly, you're going to roll literally right past that thing and run back and sweep it. It's useless, okay? But with this macro, you just press the button, it'll stop your roll or your cheat torpedo immediately. So if I want to land right on this thing, I can just stop my roll with that one button and I'm good to go. Something that I will commonly do is I will roll and then cancel my roll right away by spamming the button to try and cut the corner really fast. So if there's a mage over here, I don't want to get sheeped. I can just roll and then cut the corner by pressing the button by canceling my roll. So I can quickly get around corners to avoid death grips, sheeps, shadow step kidneys, all that good stuff. The macro is important. It's one of the most important things you need as a Mistweaver when getting started. Macro will be linked in the info box below. So be sure to go check that out. Another common thing with the Mistweaver is having your port always set behind a pillar, okay? Do not get screwed over by having your port in the middle of the map, somewhere in a bad spot. Always reset this. I still make this mistake once in a while, and it literally costs me the game if I do this. You always have to have your port out of LOS, okay? Because when you do not have it there, you can port in a really shitty spot. The safest place to be as a Mistweaver is literally behind a pillar. So if you are in the middle of the map and your port is also in the middle of the map, it's so easy for the melee, the casters to get immediately on you after you port. You have to be in a spot behind a pillar. So always get in a good habit of just resetting your port always behind a pillar and then porting out when you're in trouble, okay? Do not make that mistake. Practice it, get better at it. It's very crucial. Outside of that, you wanna be saving your fortifying brew and your healing elixirs for yourself. Obviously, those are your only two personal defensives. Cocoon is one that you can use on everyone, so it's not always the best thing to use on yourself. However, it's such a short CD that you can freely use it on yourself and it's not that big of a deal because you can cycle that. You're revitalizing Voodoo Totem and something like, you know, Vitality Conduit Major. And cycling those three, you never really have to heal too much, to be honest. And that's how you stay so mana efficient. But when you do use Cocoon, remember that you want to make sure you have a hot on the target while Cocoon is up because it increases all the healing over time effects of your hots if that target has Cocoon on them. So if you have a Cocoon and like a Renewing Mist or an, envelop and an Enveloping Mist, it's game over. That target's getting a full HP no matter what they do because it's so much healing and such a big absorb. Make sure you're keeping your renewing mist kind of flowing throughout the group. Don't overuse them. Like don't put it on yourself if you do not need it because it does cost some mana, not a lot, but it's 2.5% of your mana. So, you know, if you're not taking damage, don't put hots on yourself, okay? But when you do have some serious damage coming in and you need burst healing right away, you want to make sure that you have enveloping mist on the target if necessary, because it increases the healing of your other spells by 40%. So you can imagine if you have Cocoon up, then you get the buff from this, your Renewing Mist and your Vivifies are just going to be slapping massive, massive HPS, okay? So basically, if someone's in big trouble and I don't have Cocoon up, I'm going to use something like an Enveloping Mist into Vivify spam to get extra healing on that. But... I try not to use Enveloping Mist if I don't have to because it does cost 5.2% of your mana. However, most of the time I prefer to just simply use Thunder Focus T into Vivify Spam because they don't, those don't cost any mana based on Thunder Focus T. But if you do need to get an Enveloping Mist out there, try to prioritize one Vivify if you are using Sacred Infusion into an Enveloping Mist. Why do I do that? Because I get the Mastery buff from my Secret Infusion but I also get the benefit of Thunder Focus T. If you use Enveloping Mist with Thunder Focus T, if I activate my Thunder Focus T into an Enveloping, mi enveloping Mist, my Enveloping Mist is gonna immediately heal for an extra 50K, okay? But if I use my Vivify first, because of Secret Infusion, I get a lot of mastery, and then I'll go into an Enveloping Mist and I get the extra added benefit of Thunder Focus T. I know it's a lot of T's going on, but essentially when you are specced into Focus Thunder, which you always are going to be, you have two charges back to back on your Thunder Focus T, right? I can use it for one for a Vivify to save mana and I get the Mastery buff and then I can go into an Enveloping Mist and I still get the benefit from 
my Thunder Focus T, and it's gonna buff my Enveloping Mist as well. So I'm getting the Mastery buff, and I'm getting a buffed Enveloping Mist as well that's also buffed by Mastery. It's just insane, okay? It's absolutely insane, you guys. So be sure to try and do it in that order if you can, but you just wanna make sure they're using Thunder Focus T with Vivify, and in some case scenarios, you're using it with Enveloping Mist, and in some case scenarios, you use it for renewing mist if you're fighting like a shadow priest and you just want long duration hots however they're often purged so don't worry about those too much the other case for my thunder focus t if i'm playing in twos or i'm playing with a caster or i just want to add extra damage or i want more versatility is i use it with my rising sun kick rising sun kick with thunder focus t pretty much reduces the cooldown making it zero so i can rising sun kick into a blackout kick into a rising sun kick so it's a way to burst with your thunder focus t rising sun kick is an 11 second cooldown after your globals are off you essentially get two rising sun kicks back to back but you also get the versatility buff from secret infusion if you decide to use it with you know rising sun kick okay so just remember the way in which you use your thunder focus t is it really what the class is all about if you want to be mana efficient you use it with vivify if you want to, you know, get burst healing out, use it with enveloping mist. If you want to use it with damage, use it with rising sun kick. Okay, you guys, I know that was a lot of info, but I hope you guys enjoyed that guide. If you have any questions, you can let me know in the comment section below, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Please be sure to check out my live stream somewhere here on the screen. If you do want to ask me questions and want a live response, I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to chat with you, and maybe I'd love to even play with you sometime. Now, if you guys are looking for additional help and my own personalized coaching, you can check me out at my Patreon page. It's a great way to support this channel, support videos like these, and also earn yourself some coaching at the same time. But with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.